People from across the country are here for an urgent debate. With an unprecedented housing crisis, does Canada need to slow down immigration? What do we do when we have nowhere to put them? Two want a limit. There aren't enough resources. And two say that would stall new housing. I could say, oh, I'll build 100 this year. I don't have the labor to do that. But your short-term gain is my loss. All right, so we're talking Canada and immigration, not about stopping immigration. There are some people talking about whether the pace of immigration should be slowed down, largely because of the pressure on infrastructure, housing in particular. So that's why we've assembled you here. We also have Armin Yalnizi and The Economist listening in, who will come back to us after we have our chat with some ideas for the future. And I'm looking at you, Nina, because I'm wondering what you think about that, that the pressure that they keep talking about is on housing and infrastructure. So let's slow immigration. Is that something you hear often? Absolutely. If there isn't uh, a plan for uh, where to house them, then why bring them into the country, especially Ontario? Everywhere I go, quality of life is not there anymore. I came here when I was a teenager and I'm contemplating, should I stay in the country or should I leave? I don't see a future at the moment. And my children, what is their future really? Everywhere I go, there aren't enough resources. So I would like to ask my government, please give us a plan. Is If there isn't enough supply of housing, then you have to sit down before bringing people into the country, make sure there's a plan. So Nina, I, I hear you, but I'm also gonna presume that you're not saying that there isn't a value to immigration. Immigration is the only way to sustain our economy. I get it. But you have to have even distribution of people. Everyone is coming to Ontario. Give incentives to companies. Give incentives to people to um, create or build infrastructure out of Ontario. I, I see you, Sean, sort of nodding every now and then. Yes. What, what resonates with you? I was born in Canada, but my family is from Jamaica, so I'm first generation. And just the experience that my friends who are immigrants speak about coming over now versus the experience that like my mom and my grandma had, completely different, completely different. There's definitely something wrong. Like my mom who made significantly less than I do was able to afford a house in Pickering. I'm probably gonna be shut out of the housing market completely and be a forever renter, which I'm fine with, but the reality is something has to change. And I think the only way we can look at what needs to change is to take a step back and slow down. I have friends who are paying seven months up front to secure housing. I work full-time and part-time, so I completely understand um, the struggle. You work full-time and part-time yeah. to afford your, your place? to just afford life in general. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not just rent, like basic necessity. I was at the grocery store and butter was like $7. And I was like, what? When did this happen? So housing, 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 right? This, this is, this is the, the pressure point that comes up. Andrew, in, in Moncton, you build houses. Yes. I'm, I'm just going to take a leap that, that you are probably thrilled at immigration because you need people to build those houses. Yeah. And we keep hearing that we're in a housing crisis, and this is not just in Toronto, this mm -hmm. is Canada. It's every single bigger city, smaller city, it's, they need housing, affordable housing, and then just housing by itself. And it, it's great. Like I could say, oh, I'll build a hundred this year. Well, I can't, because I don't have the labor to do that. We're, we're talking about more and more people coming in. More How more is it people. you don't have a labor? So like da daily, I'm getting 20 to 30 resumes from people that want to move to Canada. It doesn't correlate between, so like I want carpenters typically, and there's a lot of them are furniture makers. So in other countries, they make furniture, which mm -hmm. they feel they're a carpenter. Well, that doesn't translate over to us and they can't build anything. We looked at the uh, list of the, the top five jobs for new Canadians when they come mm -hmm. here. The trades isn't on the list. No. So when you hear a conversation about potentially slowing, yeah. what, is it, what does that say to you? I, we need more, we need help getting the skilled laborers here. Now the different provinces all have programs, they're throwing money at it. 
but what good is it if you're giving low low loans to encourage developers to build more houses and more units, multi units? Okay, where am I getting the bodies to help? RF. So not only are you in Vancouver, which has this uh, outrageously high housing cost, um, but you're in tech, which has been kind of an interesting industry over the past couple of years. Where are you at right now? Yes, I mean, I think tech is actually a really good success story for Canada's immigration policy. Uh, there's over a million people that now work in technology within Canada. And these are high paying jobs where people contribute to the tax base and help fund the social services that we all need, like in healthcare and with infrastructure and with education. If we choose to pause the number of immigrants that we're bringing in, or if we choose to lower the number, we're going to rapidly age as a population. And the number of people who are going to be using social services is much higher than the number that are going to be uh, contributing to the tax base. Mm -hmm. If we continue on that path, everything becomes becomes a problem. But you must have some empathy for the, for, for the conversation on this side of the table about potentially slowing it down. I mean, th these problems are real. No, of course. I mean, I live in Vancouver. Our rents are exorbitant. It's, it's, it's a really hard environment. Um, I think some of the cost of living challenge is, you know, related to things outside of immigration. If you look at even the levels plan now, half a million immigrants is only 1.3% of the population. Mm -hmm. So these problems are beyond just bringing people into uh, to the country. Uh, there is inflationary pressure that's unrelated to you know, the immigration targets that we're setting. I feel like this has become a little bit of what came first, the chicken or the egg. It's like, it's great, you can bring people over and you know you have, you found someone that like can assist you, but what do we do when we have nowhere to put them? If they're coming over and they're taking all their savings and you're saying, hey, I want seven months up front, what quality of life have we actually improved on? But if you look at the other provinces, so Moncton, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, our areas, rent's cheaper. It, being able to buy a house is more realistic compared to the Toronto market, the Vancouver market. So it's easier, or maybe we need to encourage them to go to different areas in the country instead of all, the, and they seem to always come to Toronto. I agree, but I think the reality is a lot of people are not going to say, hey, I want to live in Quis Pam Sis over Toronto. Like they want life experiences. They want the big city. They want to come here. And I feel that employers like yourself um, who bring uh, skilled labor uh, from other countries, um, why can't we look at our own country and Get, give them the skill set that they need to build your homes. We just don't have those bodies. Right. So I think all of that is true, but because the time it will take to actually train those people will be a very lot of time between when you train them and when they're actually going to be used. To true. To I, I have but three your short in carpentry. Mm -hmm. So they're 18 year olds. They just yeah. came out of high school. They're in the apprenticeship program. Yeah. By the time I train them, by the time they go to school, by the time they get that, that's five to ten years before they can then start training other people. And you need but to be skilled now. right now. Yeah. 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 But your short-term gain is my loss. But he's building no houses. houses. So no, I understand I'm that. I'm trying to get the housing because they, they want 30,000 new projects, building projects in Canada over the next three years or something. And there's money that the government's throwing at it. Once again, and, and uh, sure, I can say I'll build 10 multi-units this year, but they're all going to be built slower because I have only so many people. Immigrants have always been the solution to Canada's problems. They have helped solve the tech problem. They have helped, uh, you know, build this country into what it is. And it's the same with housing, right? So if we immigrate 100,000 construction workers in the fields that we actually need them, like woodworkers and construction workers and carpenters, and they each contribute an average of 10 homes a year. We're building a million homes a year from the immigrants that we brought in. And we simply just don't have enough tradespeople right now that are going to be able to do that. Sorry, but then how do we combat? We're basically in a 30 year deficit when it comes to housing, as in we would need to build for the next 30 years to catch up to our population. So if we're continuing to add to that population, how do we combat that? We also have to acknowledge the fact that our social services are also stressed. <laughs> food banks are overwhelmed. They're running out of food because people can't afford to live. And I feel like that's also contributing to the fact why you see this declining population. Kids are actually a big question I have. And it's not a question of, 
do I want children? Do I think I'd be like fit to raise them? It's literally like, can I afford them? Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a disservice to bring people over when we can't offer them the quality of life that we, we experience. We talk about immigration sometimes as, as one word, as one phenomenon, but I mean, but we all know it's, it's, there are many different pots that that goes into, right? So there, there are permanent residents. We're looking at 485,000 by 2024, 500,000 by 2025 and so on. But then there are the international students who all need a place to live. So 700,000 of them. And then you have the temporary foreign workers. And what's the percentage of those students being trained? Are they staying in Canada? Are they contributing? Are they paying taxes? Are they going back home? It's a, are we it's benefiting a from that effort? Because that's a lot of housing for those students. That's a huge portion of Moncton is uh, students from just come in to study. There's always a good moment to bring in Armenia Nisi, and I think this is probably a good one. So welcome back. What do you make of what you heard? The reason we're here right now is because we have a housing crisis, but we also have a demographic crisis. Canada is not the only one that's dealing with this situation, but boy, we are changing a conversation that in Canada has never been where it is now, where historically we have been a country that has been built on immigrants, as you raised earlier, Arif. And uh, now our taste for immigration is starting to cool a little bit because everybody's worried about where they're gonna live. Where did this country first screw up on, on this file? So our first wave of, we rely on immigrants for the solution for everything. The last time we had a labor shortage of this scale was in the early 50s. And my parents came in that wave of immigration. And back then there wasn't a lot of housing, but the federal government was building tons of social housing because they knew that people that had gone to the war and come back weren't gonna move back to their family farms. They were gonna stay in the big cities and there wasn't enough housing in the big cities. So they built low cost housing after the second world war. In the 1990s, the federal government said, it's been nice, see you. That's where we fell off the truck. We thought that the market could handle all of our housing needs and the markets will never handle low cost housing needs. And we still aren't addressing that even though the federal government has quintupled what it is spending every year in the last five years, they've really thrown money at it. The market will never deliver low cost housing for people like Sean. Mm -hmm. what, what do you make of, of what Andrew was talking about in terms of keep bringing people in, but, but bring different people or bring the, the right people in, the trades people? The mix of people is incredibly important, but how do we deal with the demographic crisis so that we are actually maximizing the potential of our own people? We still have over a million people that are unemployed and many more million who are underemployed and earning crappy wages and we're not giving them the training opportunities. You know, same point that I was making, that, uh, that you have to have a plan before you bring these people in. Uh, train our own people, distribute uh, the population. Okay, I have, a, I have an issue with your distribution, whereas I love the idea of why don't more people move to other places other than the big cities? And yeah, for people living in the big cities, that's an obvious question, but they come to where their communities are. Mm -hmm. They come to where their networks are. They come to where the jobs are. Absolutely. There aren't as many jobs in Moussigny or in Moncton or in Wawa, right? So the way we got immigrants to move to places that were less populated a hundred years ago was we gave them land. We didn't do that in the 50s and we didn't need to because we were moving from a wartime ec economy to a peacetime consumer economy. It was not, where do you live? It was like, come to where we build things, which was Southern Ontario. Yeah, I still think national interest over emotions that I, the, you know, building communities. So we have to look at problem nationally. What is good for Canada? Well, that so is important. We do, we do that already. We actually bring people to underpopulated areas, mm -hmm. um, usually with some kind of idea that you stay for three years or five years, we'll give you some kind of a benefit. Mm -hmm. We do that with doctors that are trained in Canada. However, we live in a democratic society. You can't force people to stay there for fi over five years or over three years. But you can't say, this is it now, you're indentured. You have to live in Wawa for the rest of your life. People have the right to move. One of the issues with saying you have to live in a place where they may not necessarily want to live is it makes the country less attractive for the people that we need 
to solve our demographic issues. I don't think the solution is less immigration. I think the solution is how do we accommodate the immigration that we need by thinking boldly, by thinking creatively. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And so the place that is gonna win this race for talent mm -hmm. is the place that says, come and live with us because our quality of life is wonderful. You can afford to live here. We've got the services that you need. You wanna make sure people have a living wage. Mm -hmm. Like in Toronto, you have to have a pre-tax income of $84,000 for the average one bedroom apartment. How long do you think this story is gonna last? We're gonna end up having to, you know, deal with shelters for workers so mm -hmm. that we can get our Tim's poured in the morning. There are no right answers on this one. It's like you, you solve the labor shortage problem here and you create a housing problem there. Yeah. You solve the housing problem here and you create a labor shortage problem, right? Well, what's going through your head when you hear that? I kind of think of like what my mom used to say when we would get in trouble and do something too fast. She would say, when your hand is in the lion's mouth, you take your time to pull it out. If we keep going this way, um, we're not responding at all. We're just actually adding to the problem. So you haven't changed your mind? No. Okay. <laughs> Andrew, did you hear anything here that uh, is giving you some pause? I would still ask for immigration to keep coming um, because it, we, we can't just, we need to keep the houses being built. And by the way, one of the things we should be asking our colleges and universities to do is what they do in the United States. Why are we waiting for five